Hello friends, greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Foundation Examination. We are looking at the Chapter 5 Test Management and we are almost done with all the topics of Chapter 5 and we will be looking on the last one now, that's Incident Management. So generally it's uh, all about like the defect management, how the defects are being managed within the life cycle of testing as well, like how the defect is being reported and on the other side how it passes on to the different organizations, the different uh, team members and then we try to make sure that it is resolved and then it is retested and so on. So let's quickly understand that what is the defect tracking life cycle or incident management all about. So the very first thing is obviously to understand the difference between the term incident and followed by that what is defect. Now when you talk about incident, obviously incident is generally called when a tester reports a defect for the first time. But why don't we call it as a defect? Because ISTQB says that when it was just limited to a test engineer, it is not recommended or it's not mandatory that it was really a defect because it might be due to uh, a particular misunderstanding or it might be due to the scenario, it might be due to invalid set of data or it might be due to a typographical error. So we generally cannot declare anything, anything, any discrepancy as a defect initially when it is reported with the status new because until and unless it is evaluated by a senior resource of the organization, it is till then called as an incident which is just limited to one particular test engineer who just found it. So to make sure that like everything is correct or not, we will like to understand the entire life cycle of the incident tra tracking or say defect tracking life cycle. So generally assume that a tester T1 was testing in a particular module and he executed a test case and that test case failed. So the moment a test case fails is what you report, a discrepancy in form of the status new which you will be having all the relevant information about the defect, including the cycle which helped it to found, or which test environment he was using, what test data he tried with, what test case he was executing, and mentioning the status on the particular uh, scenario. So basically what a generally a test engineer reports is the scenario, what he experienced when his test case failed. So generally the first discrepancy is reported with the status new, which further goes for evaluation and once the evaluation holds good, that it is found positive, the status of the defect uh, moves from new to open. Once a discrepancy or incident is declared open, that means it is found genuine by an authorized person of the organization, maybe a test lead or test manager of the organization has reviewed it and declared it open. In case it is not found genuine, the incident can be directly closed right from the new status so it does not follow any kind of other status or does not have any kind of further steps required it can be directly closed right from the new status to the closed status whereas once it is opened of course it is passed on to the development team at this point of time and uh, you know being passed to the development manager that you can find out which tester which developer developed that module so that he can find it easily and fix that issue and once the developer manager assigns the defect to that a particular uh, a relevant developer, it, the status of the defect changes from open to assigned. That means now the defect lies with the uh, certain developer with whose name will be updated in the report that it is with this uh, XYZ developer who will be taking care of this defect hereafter and further evaluation of that. Now, when it comes to the developer, of course, the developer takes his own time to understand what is the issue all about. He can go back to the tester to ask him if any further details are required to be understood or explore the defect all about because root cause analysis is what we need to do to find out the defect. And before that, we need to know what exactly the defect is all about. So it, it's, it's not mandatory team that the defect, what you see, the, that's the exact reason for the defect. Say, for example, you get a defect on login page, possibility is that it might be due to database, it might be due to uh, registration page or any kind of other module instead of the login page itself. So root cause analysis is very important and for that developer need to know that what exactly was the steps taken by the tester. So, you know, it was helpful for you to find out the issue and which can help him to debug the scene and obviously fix the defect on time. So once the developer accepts the defect and starts rebuilding it or fixes it, it can change the status from assigned to result, 
where resolved status means that the defect which was reported is now resolved, it is fixed, and you can cross-check or you can go ahead with the further steps on that. Whereas there's other possibilities as well from the tester to give away, from the developer to give away to you, that is one is deferred, where the developer says that now, right now, I accept your defect, but I cannot fix it right away. Maybe it is related to a future requirement, will not be fixed right now. Or maybe, you know, the developer is running a little busy and can be pushed to the next version of it or anything such like that. But the, yes, the defect is accepted. It's not like on the other side that I didn't get what exactly the issue was. On the other side, we can also reject the defect, stating that uh, it was not at all an issue on my side. It might be a test environment issue, or you need to tell me, explain me more detailed ways of that. We do have many other, you know, different status within organizations. So every different organization have their own standards of using the status on the defect. So instead of rejected, they can also call it as duplicate when the same defect has been raised two times. Or generally what happens, say, you report a defect from login page, you report a defect from registration page, and both the defect had one common cause. Then one defect will be fixed and the second defect will be marked as duplicate. So there are different ways by which a duplicate can be marked, or some of the organization can merge duplicate and reject it as one status and write the comments below that it was just a copy of defect ID so and so. So that's also possible instead of like having more number of status to get confused with, you can make it more simpler and easier to follow. So coming back to the original status when it is resolved, it comes back to the tester again who raised the issue and tester generally performs uh, you know, a test which we call it as retesting. So generally retesting is the place when it is fixed, uh, the retesting is performed to make sure that uh, the defect which was reported has been resolved or not. So generally the same test case which revealed the defect will be re-executed and to make sure that this time it passes. So if the test case passes, it means that retesting passes. And uh, if it is passed, of course, the defect has been resolved. And following that, it will be passed on to the test lead once again for verification that obviously he was not alone to open the defect. It was opened by a senior person of the organization by evaluating it. Then obviously the tester cannot have all the rights to close the defect himself. So the verification will be passed on to the manager again and manager will verify that and close it. Whereas well, in case not, if the retesting fails on the other side, obviously the defect still exists. So we have one more status to give away that, okay, we tried conducting retesting and the retesting again shown me the same issue that it has still failed, so it does not pass us. So you can push the reopen, which means that it will go back to the open state where it will come back to the assign again. So this cycle will continue until unless the defect is finally closed. So after verification, obviously the manager will close this defect and make sure that this is being tracked and managed. So when we say about defect tracking and management, it's not just limited to tracking of a defect because it is important for a tester to trace the defect that what's happening on my reported issue. And second is also to manage the issue so that in future, if we come across any similar thing, we can take necessary actions from the reports gathered during this process. So that's one of the things to be remembered from this section. Beyond that, we need to understand some of the things like what is the objective of writing a report? Like why don't we just skip the report part and just track the defect? So it's very important when you see incident report to be managed are very important. So we have few objectives to uh, maintain such things, where first of things is like the other stakeholders. So when you talk about the stakeholders like developers, design team, or the requirement management team, who takes care of such necessary informations, and when you report a defect related to that, so you really don't know that where the defect was introduced. It might be introduced during the requirement phase or design phase or development phase, which you got in testing. So it is very important for the different stakeholders or other parties to know that what was the incident all about and how we can improvise ourselves. So one of the objectives is that to provide information to developers and other stakeholders. And second is obviously your test managers need some means of tracking for the quality of the work products. As you generally prepare the requirements, you conducted reviews, as we know from chapter one now. So it was important for us to know that why did we skip these things? We could have taken such measures at or certain steps at that point of time where we could have found it. 
So generally, we take care of such steps as well, which can provide a source of information to the managers on means of tracking the quality of the system and the quality of the work products, what we prepare. And more or less, we do have always a room for improvement of our process. So if we know where we have gone wrong, we can obviously improvise ourselves. So that's, these are the three things so which we come from the objective of uh, incident writing incident reports. And beyond that, obviously, uh, let's look into like what we have included as a part of defect report or incident report. So generally, a defect report includes certain uh, common things which you all be already aware of. Uh, this might be something new to those who have not started working with this still. But yeah, these are very common things to remember and understand. Like a unique identifier, that's the ID of the entity, which we always uh, maintain as a part of the configuration management so that it can be tracked uniquely. The title and a short summary of the defect, that what was it all about. The date it was reported, issuing authority, and the author. Author means here the person who wrote the defect or found the defect. Identification of the test item, which revealed the issue, like the configuration item or the environment. The development lifecycle phase in which the defect was uh, observed. So development here does not mean the development itself. It is the SDLC phase, whether you found it during the requirement phase or during the design review or maybe during the testing. Testing means, again, like unit testing, integration testing, which phase of the development lifecycle. A description about the defect, obviously, to understand and reproduce the defect or find out, like, take some screenshots and all, which enables the other stakeholders like developer to find out the exact issue. Expected and actual result, which comes as a part of your execution, scope or degree of impact, which we call it as severity. So there are more here. We have severity and priority, the status, what we were just learning now in the first topic. Conclusion and recommendation and approvals comes once the defect has been resolved, that how it was basically resolved, what was the you know, main reason how did we fix it, because it would be required as an information for the developer as well in future if the same type of or similar defect occurs again. Global issues that might be impacted with the change which will help you with the regression testing to be conducted soon after the retesting passes. The change history, how many modifications has taken place on the defect report, like things were updated, things were modified, then obviously the change history is very important. And the references, including the test cases that reveal the problem. So all those information which was used uh, throughout the process to finally, you know, uh, understand the defect or which helped you to do the root cause analysis or which helped you to uh, resolve the defect would be mentioned as a part of it. So putting it all together, the incident reports are pretty important to you know, help you with uh, managing the quality of the system or measure the progress on the project or provide information and all this information are a part of your defect report. So uh, from this section, you would be definitely expecting a question either on the status or the defect report objectives or maybe the incident management report itself. So having these skills with you would help you a lot to at least answer at least one question from this section. So that's all from this video. We have uh, only about the incident management in this tutorial and this being the last question of or this chapter or the last topic in this chapter. We'll be concluding with chapter five here. So we'll be having the next tutorial on the sample questions for chapter five. So stay tuned for the upcoming video and tutorial on the sample questions. And uh, if in case you have any query, you can feel free to contact me back by commenting on the videos. Do help me improve the things. If you have any feedbacks, you are always open to share it with me. Beyond that, obviously we'll be looking into the last chapter of ISTQB, sixth chapter, that's tool support for testing. So thanks for watching team. Take care. This is all for now. We have more videos coming up on the upcoming tutorials and also on the upcoming chapters of this uh, tutorial. So stay tuned for more videos. Do hit the bell icon for getting notified about the latest videos. And in case you have not subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe as early as possible because we'll be having more videos about technologies and testing coming up back after this, right after this. So uh, stay tuned and... Uh, Till then, enjoy learning, happy learning, take care.